Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be continuing to configure Open Media Vault for our self hosting environment. So I've logged back into the system, and if you'll notice in the upper right corner in the notification panel, we have an update available. In the previous video, I showed you how to do system updates. You go to System, Update Management, Updates, and then click this button right here. However, today I'm going to be showing you how to apply updates through the terminal. And we're going to be working a little more with the terminal today and getting it set up so it's more efficient for us to use. We'll start with that. If you remember, we use this command to SSH into the server, SSH-I. We give it the private key, our user, at the IP address of the server. And if you're using PuTTY, you're just using the user interface and putting these same parameters into it. And with PuTTY, it's really nice because you'll just be able to save your profile and then double click on it to open it up again. With Linux, since we're gonna be using the terminal that's already on our computers, we can make it easy on ourselves as well by editing the config file that lives in the .ssh directory of our home folder. And I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick. I like to use micro for editing text in the terminal. And that's this command, micro, and then we're just gonna open up that config file. Here we just have to give it those parameters. So we're gonna start with host. And this is gonna be how we call these configs up. So we're gonna just call it OMV. And then all we'll have to do is type in SSH, OMV, and we'll instantly be logged into our server. The next thing we need to put in here, though, is the host name, which is going to be the IP address of the server. Our user. And our private key, and that's going to be called identity file. Then control S saves in micro and then control Q quits in micro. And then all we have to do is SSH OMV and we're gonna be logged right into our server. So it's much easier to type in. We don't have to remember the long SSH command and all the arguments that it requires, SSH OMV anytime we need to get into our Open Media Vault server. Now that we're logged into the server with the SSH session, and we have our terminal up here. It's showing Tony at Open Media Vault. We have this pending update. Now, in order to apply updates, it's really easy. You just sudo omv upgrade, and this is going to ask for the password. We'll type that in, and this is running the upgrade process. And you'll be able to see in this upper right corner that notification is going to go away when this update finishes. The update's finished. We can see this disappeared. And if actually, if we go out of here and back in to updates, you can see the update no longer is present there. The next thing we're gonna be doing today is installing TimeShift. And TimeShift is going to take snapshots of our operating system. That way, if we mess something up, or if an update comes down and messes something up, we can revert back to a working state. Timeshift is really easy to install. sudo app install timeshift. And you can see here timeshift needs to install a bunch of other packages that it's going to depend on. And down here it's asking, do you want to continue? Now this has a capital letter Y because that is the default selection if we just hit enter. So that's what we're going to do. We don't have to type anything. And I like pointing little things out like that in the terminal. If you're already familiar with Linux, it might sound like I'm over explaining some of these things, but I wanna provide a few of the finer details on what I'm doing in the terminal. So a beginner or somebody coming from Windows can pick up these shortcuts and be more efficient and have fun using the terminal. All right, well, let's get back to what we're doing. Time shift is installed and we're gonna take our first snapshot with it. So sudo, Time shift, create, and that creates a snapshot. That would be good enough right there, but we're gonna give it a comment as well and just put in initial snapshot. Our snapshot's complete. 
which is good. We can always get back to this state on the machine. We could go in here and just completely mess everything up, but we could always revert back to this state. However, we want to change a few other configuration options within time shift. And to do that, we're going to edit the time shift JSON file. And that's going to be micro, our favorite text editor, Etsy, time shift, time shift .json. Hit enter. Well, micro is not installed on the server. So we have to install micro on the server first because we got this error message. And same process, sudo apt install micro. Now micro is installed and we'll be able to use it to open up this timeshift.json file. This error we can ignore because we're going to be fixing the home folder issue later in this video. So we're just going to ignore this for now. It's not going to affect anything that we're doing. And then here we have the timeshift.json file. And there's a few things in here that I like to change. One is schedule daily. I change to true. So it's going to take a daily snapshot every single day. We can see count daily is five. So it's going to keep the last five days worth of snapshots. And then down here, there's some excludes because time shift is going to be used to back up just the OS. And we don't want it to be backing up any of the data drives. So what we're going to do in here is add a few more excludes. I'm going to put a comma, keep the same format that they had going on previously. And then we're going to put in this directory because this is where Open Media Vault mounts all the data drives to. And then we're going to add one more for a directory that we'll be creating later. And then we can press Control S. However, we're getting a permission denied because we didn't open this file with sudo. But one of the nice features of micro is it's going to catch that and it's going to reopen the file with sudo and then save it. So we can just press Y and then we can Control Q to quit. Now we need to run a time shift check. So sudo time shift check. And what that command basically does is it checks to see if a snapshot has been done within the last 24 hours. If it hasn't, it'll take a snapshot. If it has, then it's all good. And it also added a cron task to this file here. And what that's going to do is run time shift check every hour on the hours. So that's also good. However, we want to run our own time shift check so that we can monitor that it is in fact working and to do that we're going to go into the user interface which has logged us out here so we'll have to log back in and we're going to create our first cron job in open media vault so let's go to system scheduled tasks and then create and what we'll do is we'll run this at 405 every day So we select five for our minutes, four for our hour, and now we can type in time shift check. And we don't have to sudo because it's gonna be already running as the root user. Time shift check is already gonna be running every hour on the hour, but we wanna run our own because later on, when we set up a monitoring system, we're gonna append onto this our curl command for our health check. But we're just going to put it in there right now so it's ready and waiting when we do have an actual monitoring system in place. You can hit save and now it should pop up to apply. There it is. Now the reason I'm showing you how to update in the terminal is because I want to have it set that we can go into the terminal and just do update and then it's going to take a snapshot and then apply the update. That way, if the update breaks the system, we can revert back very easily to the state that it was in just prior to the update happening. Right now, this isn't going to work because it doesn't exist, but we're going to set this up using an alias with our bash RC file. 
which we cannot do right now because we do not have a home folder. So we need to start setting up shares in Open Media Vault and give ourselves a place for our home folder. For that, we're going to head on over to Storage and Shared Folders. And here we'll create our first shared folder. And we're going to just name it Home. This is going to be our home folder. And we can select which drive it's going to go on. Now remember, I have four data drives. If you just have one, that's OK. We're referring to these four four gigabyte drives as our data pool. But we're just going to select this one for now to put all these shared folders on. But let's save that home folder. And then let's set up the rest of some of the shares that I like to have on my NAS. And the other one that I like to have is one for Docker. And this is where all the Docker configs and Docker compose files are going to end up living. Any data that the Docker services generates, it's going to be in this directory here. And we'll put that on the same data drive. And then a folder for media, so all of our movies, TV shows, music is going to end up living in this directory. I like to have a public directory, which is kind of like a catch-all that I store all the files in an organized manner for all the other devices in the house. And then we're going to be creating a backups folder. And this is also going to be placed on the data drive, which might seem counterintuitive because if it's called backups, you might think it would go on the backup drive. But we're going to be placing it on the data drive because this is where our other devices are going to be sending their backups to. So this is where your phone is going to be sending its pictures, its documents. This is where your laptops, your desktops are going to be sending their files for backup onto the server. And then later when we set up an uh, actual backup system for our data, we will be using Borg. And that will be taking snapshots of the entire server and putting them on the backup drive. So the Borg repo will live on the backup drive and we'll be backing up everything that exists on the server. And you may have use cases to create other folders than this. You can make any folders that you see fit that are going to accommodate your needs, but that's what I like to have. And so I'll click Apply and we'll apply those changes. And next we can actually set up our user home directory. For that you go to Users, Settings, and we'll need to enable this. But firstly, we'll need to log off of the server, otherwise we'll get an error message. So Control D logs off. And then we can enable and select our home shared folder here and save. And we'll apply that right away and then we'll log back into the server and we'll have a home directory. So SSH OMV now gets us back into the server and we're back in and you can see it used to drop us in root, but now it's dropping us into home. You can tell that uh, by the tilde there. And then if we do a PWD, which is going to show us where we actually are, you can see it's this long pathway, which looks crazy. But if we go back to storage and shared folders, we can see that coincides with this path right here. And now that we have a home directory for our user that we're going to be using to do a lot of configuration on Open Media Vault, we can set up our bashrc file. And bashrc file is just a file that gets ran anytime you open a terminal or log in with SSH. And we're going to set an alias in there so that when we do an update, it takes a snapshot right before it does the update. So once again, we're going to be using our favorite text editor micro and dot bash rc is the file that we're going to create and open here we're going to create that alias for that we just go alias update equals single quote sudo time shift create we'll give it a comment to double quotes and we'll just call update on the comment and then we're going to do ampersand ampersand and what ampersands do like this is if the previous command completes successfully, it'll then run the next command. And the next command we're going to want to run is sudo omv upgrade to do the upgrade. We'll press Control S, Control Q. And now we have an alias for update. However, it's still not going to work 
because we have to actually load that bash file. We could just log out and log back in to load it. Otherwise, we can do it right from here by doing source bash rc. And now we can run update. And when I hit enter, it's going to take a time shift snapshot and then it's going to do the update. And it was really fast because nothing really changed too much from the last time shift snapshot and there was nothing to actually update. But now we have a really safe way to do updates. Instead of using the user interface here, we can SSH in, type in update, type in our password, and it's going to take a snapshot and run the update all in one. So it's very nice for us to have that just in case. The other thing I like to do, we're not going to be making any scripts yet, but uh, let's make a directory to put our scripts in our home folder. And we will end up having a few scripts that we end up making. But for now, we'll just create the directory. The next thing I like to do is create symbolic links so that it's easier for us to get to these different shared folders when we're in the terminal. Because if you look at these paths, they're impossible to remember. They're annoying to type in, even with tab completion. And it's very, very difficult to find what you're looking for. We're going to make it a little easier on ourselves. Now, Open Media Vault used to mount all these shared folders right off of root in a directory called shared. They had to stop doing things that way because it caused too many conflicts with the drives. But it's going to be okay for us to create symbolic links to that same directory. That's just how I got accustomed to doing things. And at the end of the day, it's going to make us easier to get to these different shared directories when we're in the terminal. So we're gonna do that right now. Let's do Control L. Control L clears your screen so we have a, a nice clean slate here in our terminal. And then we're going to CD to root and create the shared folder. We'll have to use sudo. So we made the directory and now what we're gonna to need to do is take ownership of it so we don't have to keep typing sudo over and over. So we're gonna give this folder to our user Tony and to do that we're going to sudo well before we do that let's do id so that we can see that we are in fact the user Tony and our group is users and with that information we'll do a sudo chown and then our user our group and then the folder now if we change into that directory and we can do cd Here's a, here's a terminal tip. If you press Alt period, it will bring up the last command argument that you gave the last command. And you can keep pressing Alt period and it'll go up the next command argument. So just a quick tip, make yourself more efficient so you don't have to type as much in the terminal. And now we are in this directory, we can start creating our symbolic links. And for that, the command is ln-s. And what we're going to do here, instead of copying each one of these individually and creating symbolic links individually, is we're just going to copy this part of the path. And we'll paste that in here. And then on the end, we're going to put an asterisk. And what that's going to do is take every file and folder in this path and create a symbolic link for it here in this path. Now, if we ls we can see all these different symbolic links in here and actually if we do it ls la and i full screen this you can see that these are in fact symbolic links and over here it shows you to the directory that they are pointing to let's clear that ls and we don't need these files, this a quota group, user, and lost and found files. So we're going to go ahead and remove those symbolic links right away. And now we're left with this. And this is good. Now the next thing we want to do is be able to access these folders from other devices on the network, from our TVs, from our phone, from our other laptops and computers. And in order to do that, we need to set up the Samba service and set up Samba shares. We'll log back into the server and head over to the services tab and SMB. 
click settings and then enable it here. With that enabled, we can go to shares next and then create the Samba shares. Now, personally, whenever I'm going into the Docker or the home folder, I'm going to be using those directories from the terminal. So I'm not going to create shares to those, but the backups, the media and the public folders are going to be needing to be accessed by other devices on the network. So those are the ones that I'm going to create the shares on. And then I'm going to inherit ACLs and inherit permissions because we don't want every user to have access to these. And when we start setting up user permissions later, then it will pull those down for the Samba shares. And then we can hit apply. Now that these Samba shares are active, we can open up our file manager. And in Windows, you can use the Windows file manager and click on network i think it's very similar to this file manager and you'll be able to find your open media vault server in there double click on it and you'll see these three folders now show up in there that coincide with this and if we go into one of them let's go into the media one here it'll ask us for our username and our password we'll type that in and you can do remember forever remember until you log out forget immediately but there you go. You can start putting files on the server from your other computers, from your phone. If the file manager on your phone supports Samba protocol, I use Root Explorer and it does. There's a few other ones. Just search on Google Play Store F Droid and you'll be able to find file managers that support Samba. Cody can connect to Samba shares and start playing movies, TV right from your server. And that's what I like to do is create within these folders, start getting things organized. So in the media folder, I'll have a few folders, one for music, one for movies, one for TV. And then in the backups folder, I'll have one for each user. So cat, me, and then in each user folder, then I will have a folder for each device so like my phone laptop you know whatever devices that you're going to be backing up and in public it's just kind of like a catch-all for everything i can show you what my actual folders look like so these folders that i have mounted over here are actually connected to my server in my basement that has actual files on it. So I'll show you what it looks like. You can see my public folder has a random array of different things in it from APKs and application installs to wallpapers and backgrounds to books, educational material, IPTV stuff, just things that I need access to from all my other devices in the house. Uh, my media folder I organized in you know the way that I showed you movies music TV here you can see that actually this folder has tons of TV shows in it same for music this is how I organize things movies a backups folder you know for all the different things that I want to back up from the other devices that I have in the house you get the idea now one thing you can do so that you don't have to go through this network share here is in Windows in your file manager and you should be able to find an option that says map network drive. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but if you map the network drive, then it will show up just like any other drive on your computer so that it's easier for you to get access to it. For me in Linux, what I did is I set mounts in my Etsy fstab file and that's how these folders are getting mounted from the server. So that's a little bit better way of doing it than going through this menu over here is to mount it through fstab in linux or map the network drives in windows all right so that's going to do it for this video we got a lot done we have a faster way to ssh in we have a bash rc file a faster way to update that takes snapshots time shift is running to 
take daily backups so that if our system gets broken by us mismanaging it or through a bad update coming down, we can revert back to a working state. We have set up our first shared folders and shared them with Samba so that our other devices can access them and start putting data onto them and pulling data down from them. We're getting there. We have a few more things to take care of in Open Media Vault to get that stable base for our self-hosting environment before we can start getting into the more funner side of actually spinning up services for us to use. But we're very close to that point. Thank you guys for watching. You all have a nice day.